Okay, guys. Today we are going to move on to the next topic, which is a um, important topic uh, since quarter quality management or quality management uh, consists of the three process: planning, uh, assurance, control. Yeah, so today we are going to see the next uh, process, which is quality control. Okay, before we move on to quality control, um, Edward Demings, uh, I'm sure you guys know this Edward Deming because I have introduced this man, uh, this theorist to you uh, during the first two class. Yeah, so he said that quality must be built in at the design stage. It may be too late once plans are on the way. So it means that it has to be in a planning stage. In the early stage, in the beginning of the project, you have to start with quality. Yeah, you have to start. Uh, you have to start to look into the quality, to plan on the quality, so that when the construction starts, uh, the quality can be controlled. Quality can make sure that the quality of the product or the project or the building is meeting client uh, requirements and also uh, uh, specification. Therefore, uh, when the project is uh, closing, um, there will be no um, problem yeah, uh, uh, because of the quality. Okay. Now, what is quality control? Uh, quality control is the monitoring of specific project results to determine if they comply with the relevant quality standards and identifying ways to eliminate causes of unsatisfactory performance. So these are what quality control is about, right? To make sure that the building, the product, the services must comply to the um, quality standards that uh, has been um, has been stated in the um, in the contract document uh, at the early stage of the construction or the project. Yeah, so therefore, it can eliminate any unsatisfactory performance. And when we can eliminate the uh, unsatisfactory performance, you can also eliminate the defect. And when you can eliminate the defect, therefore, there will not be any cause of defect. Yeah. Uh, so that is what it meant by quality control. Okay, uh, last, last week, we learned about quality assurance. So what is the difference between quality assurance and quality control? They are the same. But quality assurance is an overall management plan to guarantee the integrity of data. It means that it is a plan, it's a process. So when you, when you establish a process, you are establish a system. Okay, so, and for quality control, it's a series of analytical measurement that used to assess the quality of analytical data. Yeah, so uh, this is also known as the tools. So it means that um, during the quality assurance, you must plan, you must know what are the standards to be used during the construction, uh, whether it is a European standard, Malaysian standard yeah, to be used, and what are the quality metrics, and then you use, uh, use this during the construction. So when during the construction, this is where you uh, the quality control is taken place. Yeah? So uh, this is where uh, the statistical um, uh, analytic, uh, analysis is being conducted, where you taking the sample and you conduct the analysis, you see whether uh, it, uh, it suits the uh, standards, it meets the standards or not. Yeah? So these are the difference between assurance and control. And quality assurance focus on the process, while quality control focus on the final product. How you want to make sure that the your final product is according to the specification, guideline, and so on. Okay, so that's the difference between these two process. Okay, now let's look at the benefit of quality control. So there is a lot of benefit, but the most important benefit of quality control quality control process is verifying that process, project deliverables and work meet the requirement which is being specified by the stakeholder. 
for the final acceptance. Key stakeholder can be the client, can be the project manager, can be the authority, can also be the uh, uh, the people that um, stay or, or or the residential that is uh, um, nearby the project. Okay, so when I'm when we talk about the meet meeting the requirement, it means whether the project or the product is meeting the standards. Uh, what are ISO standards they're using? Is it the European standards or is it a Malaysian standard? What are the standards? For example, you are using CIS 16 2019 or CIS 28 2022. Yeah, uh, so and also it has to meet the guideline, guideline that has been specified at the early stage of the project, the specification that is stated in the contract document, and also regulation by the authority. Yeah? So, for example, the local authority says that you cannot work during uh, night time. Uh, no work is allowed. Therefore, you have to abide with the regulation from the local authority. So, all this has to meet uh, uh, the requirement. So when you meet the requirement of all the uh, the, the uh, standards, regulations, specification, and guideline, therefore your client will you will meet the client uh, requirement, and therefore you will have the client smile, yeah, which is client will satisfy uh, um, because of your uh, performance and your product. Okay, so this is the ultimatum that we want in the project. If client does not satisfy with your project or your work, therefore he will not um, he will not um, uh, close the project or he will not accept the project. Therefore, you will have a problem uh, in dealing with the claims. Yeah, uh, so that is the most important thing. Okay, now let's look at this beautiful school. This is a school where you have a beautiful swimming pool, you have a beautiful area to lepa, and then you have a tennis court, you have also a, I don't know, playground, and also a, a football, a football field, yeah? uh, and also a lot of space to lepa. Yeah? So these are the re client requirements. This is what your client want for a, for a school. Uh, this is a uh, private school, yeah. So your client wants this as an output to your project. So the quality control process helps to determine the project output. The project output means all these de uh, deliverables, yeah, to do what they were intended to do. So it means that by having quality control process will help you to make sure that the client will get all these the uh, uh, requirement that uh, he has already stated in the uh, contract document, right? And in order to do this, this all this output need to comply with the standards, requirement, regulation, and specification. And as you know, project management has the project cycle from the initiation stage to planning, to execution, to performance, and also to project close close out and uh, these are the cycles so project and the quality control has to be performed throughout this cycle yeah throughout the project you have to make sure quality control is being performed okay project results include okay one is product when you talk about product it is a deliverables deliverables for example like just now i mentioned a swimming pool uh, three blocks of schools with a swimming pool with uh, one uh, canteen and also a beautiful um, maybe a, a lecture area yeah and so on so that is the product and management it comes with the management management is a cost and shadow performance yeah? management involve cost and shadow performance so when you talk about project result you're talking about not just a product but also it comes with the management all right management process and quality control is often performed by a quality control department so usually in uh, any um, uh, development 
uh, there is a, there is one department called QAQC. So these are the department that uh, uh, look uh, into quality. Yeah. So uh, these are the uh, person or a department that uh, are responsible on the uh, planning of the quality, the assurance of the quality, as well as control throughout the construction. And the project management team should have a working knowledge of statistical quality control, especially sampling and probability to help evaluate and control outputs. So when somebody that is responsible on quality control, that person must have a knowledge on statistical. So in other words, he has he, he or she must have a statistical background. Huh? Yeah, because when you dealing with quality control, like I mentioned before, you must know how to take sample. Yeah, you cannot just take sample any sample. You must know how many samples to take, and what are the probability of the of that samples to be rejected, yeah, or accepted. So that will help to evaluate the control output. All right. So these are the. Um, the important things that a person or the uh, the responsible person that has to uh, that that uh, is in this uh, department. Okay, the project management should be aware of the following among other subjects. Okay, during quality control process, um, the the person in charge on quality must know about what are these terms. Okay, these are all the terms that we use in the quality management. Yeah, for example, the first one is prevention. Prevention means you want to keep any defects or errors out of the process, right? You want to prevent any defects. We don't want defect because defect means cost. So we want to eliminate the uh, defects. Or inspection. Inspection is keeping error out of the customer hand. So it means that you have to inspect the building, you have to inspect the uh, product so that the client will, or the customer uh, will not uh, deal with the defect. Okay, so inspection has to be in stages. Okay, so you have to uh, schedule the uh, inspection uh, session, for example. And then attribute sampling. Attribute sampling is whether to accept your product or not yeah for example um you you are you um, last week you have done a concreting and now you uh, have taken the samples and now you find that the sample is not uh, according to the specification so uh, how many samples have you taken and uh, what are the attribute of the samples and whether your analysis your uh, finding can confirm the result whether to reject the uh, the concrete. Yeah. Uh, so that is about the attribute sampling. Variable sampling is where the results are rated on the continuous scale that measure the degree of conformity or non-conformity. Yeah. So the variables. So sampling is not dealing with the attributes but also variable samples. And then special causes. Special causes is unusual event. Sometimes defect uh, cause because of uh, uh, unusual uh, event. For example, an accident. Yeah. So that special uh, that is called by special causes. All right. Random causes is normal process variation. For example, uh, you you have um, for example you want to go for concreting. You must have um, uh, you must have a specification uh, your design your your process must according to the specification but however at that moment um, the, uh, the the site is uh, flooded for example yeah uh, so and uh, some of the samples is soaked uh, in the in the in the in the water yeah uh, so that is called as a special causes but random causes is a uh, typical causes it can it can it can occur any in any in any day yeah in any day in normal days tolerance is where results should fall within a defined tolerance range so um 
in accepting the uh, product or the process, you must know what are the tolerance. Okay, uh, in other words, July. Yeah, July. Uh, so you must know what are the tolerance, whether you want to accept or you want to reject the product. Right, you cannot simply reject the product because you must have the grounds. What are the grounds? So you must have the tolerance. So all this tolerance must be included in the quality assurance. Yeah, in quality assurance, you must state what are the tolerance that is acceptable for the uh, accepting the product and control limits. Yeah, control limits is the process in control. If it falls within these defined limits, uh, then you can uh, um, take um, a necessary action to make sure that the the defect will not recur in the next batch, for example. Okay, so these are the terms, uh, the typical terms that is being used during the, uh, in dealing with quality. All right, now let's look at the examples of quality control in construction project. Okay, again, I'm using the concrete, okay, because concrete uh, is very uh, synonym with uh, civil engineering, yeah. So, in quality control testing for concrete, the most common sample to use to collect the sample is using wheelbarrow. Okay, uh, so you use wheelbarrow to collect the sample. So, how many samples, how many wheelbarrow that you uh, uh, you are you are aiming, you are you plan to take the samples from? And then you do the slum test. What are the uh, uh, standards or the specification that you use to uh, to to test the slum test yeah? and then the temperature yeah? uh, in 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 Malaysia we don't need temperature but in other countries such as in a cold weather countries they need to know the concrete temperature yeah because if the temperature drop it will affect the uh, quality of the concrete so that is also one uh, uh, this is also one of the uh, testing that is being included in the concrete testing. And then you need to do the air content pressure method, uh, preparing concrete test specimen in the field. Yeah? So uh, maybe you collect the sample to test on the, uh, to collect the specimen so that you can uh, 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 take it to the laboratory. And then air content uh, volumetric method, uh, um, and then uh, what are the curing um, uh, curing uh, specification? How long do you need to cure the concrete in the laboratory so that you can test the, uh, the, the concrete? And then you probably need to do the density test and also you need to do the strength test. Yeah, so these are the controls. So you need to know what are the control uh specification or standard that need you need to use during the uh, construction okay that is already being uh, stated or uh, do, uh, has already been selected during the uh, quality assurance yeah so in quality control in other industries okay so not just in construction industry but in other industries also use quality control so the level efforts and also the control of the quality depends on the industry it differs from one industry to another for example in pharmaceutical industry or health industry transportation or even a nuclear industry they could be uh, maybe stricter quality control procedure because they are dealing with maybe virus maybe the nuclear uh, material yeah so um, therefore this industry is much more stricter uh, procedure and quality control compared to uh, the other industries such as in civil engineering yeah and the efforts needed to meet the standards may be extensive of course when you are dealing with all these harmful materials therefore you must have a stricter quality control and therefore it has the standard must be extensive okay now let's look at what pmbok says about quality control yeah pmbok is 
project management book of knowledge i'm sure you have seen this before i have already uh, showed you the quality um, not just quality uh, quality quality planning but also assurance and control yeah so these are the quality planning these are the quality assurance and these are the quality con uh, control so we have done quality planning we have learned about what is quality assurance the input the tools and the output and today we are going to look on to control quality or quality control okay so each of the process has the input the tools and also the output okay so what are the input what are the tools and what the, the output we are going to learn in the next slide okay so i extract the quality control let's look at the input tools and output okay input first okay so what do we need in the input the first one is the project management plan project management plan actually defines how quality control will be performed within the project yeah so you need to have this quality management plan which you have done this in quality management uh, quality plan yeah so you need this as an input to your quality control process and then you also need the project document project document consists of lesson learned lesson learned of what lesson learned earlier in the project that can be applied to later phases in the project to improve the quality control the quality matrix I've talked about this quality matrix during the quality plan last two weeks ago. So it describes on the project attributes and how quality control process will verify to comply to this uh, quality matrix. And also the test and evaluation document to evaluate the achievement of the quality objective. So you need this document as the input to your quality control. Okay, that's number two. Let's look at number three. Number three is approve change request. So if there is any request, uh, there is any changes in the quality process, you need to uh, request for changes so that uh, all the departments know about the changes all right so changes for example like uh, how to modify the defect for example like repair how do you want to repair the concrete if the concrete uh, uh, you find it um, honeycomb yeah uh, how you want to revise your work method okay maybe your work method uh, in in concreting does not uh, uh, give a good uh, performance or quality therefore you need to revise it and also you need to revise the schedule for example so these are the changes once you find that there is a changes you need to communicate to other department yeah uh, so uh, it is very important uh, so that uh, everyone all in the team knows what are the changes that you have made uh, in this in the uh, in this context it is a quality yeah it's about the project quality and then on the deliverables deliverables is what are the end product yeah the results of your project that is capable to perform a service that is required to be produced to complete a process based or a project so it means that what yeah what is the final output of your project and then the performance data the performance data is contained data on product status such as observation quality metrics measurement technical performance and also the cost and shadow performance yeah so you need this performance data so that you want to use this during your quality control process yeah and then on the enterprise environmental factor this is the project management information system this is, it is a system that is being developed by your organization maybe your organization has a software that can track on the error so um, this is one of the um, uh, system yeah and government agency regulation like i mentioned just now if you are in the shalam then you need to know who is your local authority and what are their regulation 
uh, what are the rules, standard guidelines, specification uh, that you should know about in order for you to work in that area. Yeah. And the last one is organization process asset. So this is about the company quality standard and policy, the templates maybe the company has come up with the check sheet, checklist, yeah? uh, issue and defect reporting procedure. How do you want to communicate? What are the organization uh, uh, hierarchy? Yeah? Uh, so these are, the, these are all these, all this input you need to have before you can start with the uh, quality control process. Okay, once you have the, the input just now, you can use the tools and techniques to analyze. To analyze whether your uh, uh, findings can be acceptable or is it uh, according to the specification or guideline or standards that you have stated at the early stage of the project. Okay, data gathering. The first one is data gathering. It is about checklist. Like I mentioned just now, if the company has the standard checklist, uh, then you can use the checklist to help managing the control quality activities in a structured manner. Okay, you, uh, checklist is very uh, simple, but it's very useful. Yeah, uh, in any uh, uh, project. Yeah, because especially those uh, uh, is a new. Uh, new in the in the team so he can he or she can refer to the checklist yeah because it is a structured uh, uh activity structured uh process that everyone uh, can see whether that uh, activity has been uh, done or is it uh, uh or the activity has has a problem and maybe you need to look into that activities again yeah so that is the checklist. Check sheet is to organize facts in manner that will facilitate the effective collection of useful data about the potential quality problem. Uh, check sheet are dealing with the data that uh, deals about the frequency of consequences of the fact collected. So it means that check sheet will tell uh, the check sheet usually tells you day one how many defects. Uh, occurred day two how many defect occurred okay so you know how many the frequency of the uh, defects uh, for that for that week for example so if you know there is some uh, there is a lot of defect uh, occurred during that week you therefore you need to know you can revise your process and you can uh, ensure that the defect will not occur the next week or the next batch Statistical sampling, like I mentioned to you, when you talk about statistics, you talk about sampling. So you need to take the samples. How do you want to take the samples? For example, if you have 75, uh, 100, for example, 100 uh, uh, product or 100 uh, concrete, concrete cubes, so how many uh, samples do you want to take? In, do you want to take only 10? Or is it 30 is enough? Yeah. Uh, or is it 50, 50, 50 numbers of uh, concrete cubes to be tested, for example? Yeah. Uh, so sampling is very important because when you select a, a, a weak sample, then uh, it is very difficult for you to accept or reject, uh, making a decision in accepting or rejecting a product or a process. And then uh, questionnaire and surveys. Okay, this is for other uh, industries. Yeah? yeah, for example, like marketing industries, they if they want to know about uh, their product, they may distribute their questionnaires, and the survey will gather the data about how the satisfaction of the customer, okay, of the product or services. So these are among the data gathering that you can use in collecting your data and then you need to analyze your data so um, when you analyze the data there's two things that you have to uh, bear in mind now the first one is performance review performance review dealing with measure how you measure how you 
compare your data and you analyze the quality metrics which you have identified or you have defined during the plan quality management process again the actual results so you want to see uh, this is your plan and this is your actual can you accept or you can you reject right and then cost root cost analysis root cost analysis is the analysis to identify the source of the defect so once you know there is a defect you want to know where does this come from okay so maybe because of the transportation problem yeah so or maybe because of the uh, lorry the concrete lorry problem yeah it does not uh, apa? uh it does not move that is why your concrete uh, uh fails yeah uh, so when it comes uh, when the transportation has a long journey maybe it could uh, affect the quality of your concrete yeah so maybe this is the root cause of your problems and if you can if you can identify the root cause you can also um, identify the defect and you can reduce the defect or eliminate the defect so that it would not recur the next batch All right and then inspection inspection is where you determine whether it conforms to document standard yeah so when you inspect of course you must know what to inspect of course you must know what is the metrics to inspect to 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 look for yeah so this include measurement and may be conducted at any level so you yourself have to um, justify or uh, plan when you want to inspect the site when you want to inspect uh, the um, the process yeah so uh, maybe um, two weeks uh, maybe two times in a in a month or maybe four times every week you come and inspect yeah so it de totally uh, depend on the project manager right to um, to 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 plan on the inspection but um, the inspection is to conform uh, to the standards that you have identified during the planning stage and then testing so once you have inspect you need to test so you need to test is to organize and constructed investigation okay so the purpose of testing is to find the error to find the defect what are the bugs or other non-conformance problem in the product or services yeah so that is why you need to test you need to test the uh, concrete cube so that it the strength is according to the um uh, the specification that you have identified yeah uh, so if there is something wrong with the uh, batches then you must come up with the uh, uh, solution yeah the solution so that it would not happen again tests can be performed throughout the project and early testing will help identify non-conformance problem and help reduce the cost of fixing the non-conformance component yeah the earlier you test the better okay in other words if you test it at the earlier stage for example at the first batch of the concrete you test it will help you to reduce uh, to find out what are the defect if there is a defect you uh, you can find what are the root cause of the problem therefore you can reduce the defect and um finally you can reduce the cost in fixing the defect now the data representation so once you have analyzed and uh, no once you have tested you have the you need to analyze and you need to represent your analysis so these are uh, the few the the next slides will give you the uh, usual or the typical that data representation of quality control yeah the first one the typical uh, representation usually is in cost and effect diagrams or sometimes they call fishbone diagram or ishikawa diagram okay uh, this ishikawa is the theories that we have learned in the a uh, few uh, weeks ago yeah so um, these are a very good uh, uh, representation 
of a data because it will identify what caused the problem. Okay, what uh, what is the possible effect of the quality defect and error? For example, the quality problems is is it due to the process of, or procedure, or is it comes from the material or people that handle the the the, the project, or maybe the equipment or the plan of the machineries. Yeah, so you want to know what are the causes and what this gives effect to the project. Okay, for example, the quality problems is due to the machineries. Maybe your machineries is out of adjustment, maybe because there is the two problems, or maybe it's already old. Yeah, your filing machine maybe is too old as one off, and therefore there's a lot of uh, defect occurs. Yeah, that is where you need to uh, come up with a solution on the machineries. Or maybe due to the human error, yeah? uh, because of poor supervision, maybe lack of concentration uh, of the uh, project team, and maybe your supervisor uh, has inadequate training at site. Yeah? So maybe because of this, your, uh, um, the, the defect occurs at the construction. And you can... Um, you can identify why, uh, which one is the uh, the root cause of the problem, and you can solve the problem. So these are the good um, data representation of uh, the analysis that you get, uh, data that you gathered and analyzed. Yeah. So this is the cause and effect diagram. The second data representation is control chart. Okay, control chart is to determine whether or not the process is stable or has predictable performance. Uh, upper and lower specification limits. So, uh, I'm not sure whether you have seen control chart before, but control chart has a upper and limit specification that based on the requirement that reflect maximum, minimum values allowed. Okay, so these are the control chart. You can see these are the data that you get and get. For example, uh, you can see this. Uh, for example, these are the data that you get from your analysis. All right. So this is the mean, right? These are the mean line. So you get the three standard deviation for the mean. So this will be your upper control limit. And three standard deviation from the mean, this will be your lower control limit. So you have limit upper limit and lower limit so what is upper limit and lower limit upper limit uh, wait uh, if measurement falls outside of the control limit then the process is said to be out of control okay so it means that uh, if one of these uh, data falls uh, outside of the upper control or lower control it means that your um, project is out of control okay uh, so you have to take a necessary action to make sure that the defect is kept within the uh, limits yeah uh, upper limits and lower limits yeah and uh, the assignable cost should be determined okay so sometimes uh, usually in manufacturing uh, they also refers as customer specification upper limit and lower limit yeah, to make it more stringent. So, so um, it depends on the customer. Sometimes the customer are too uh, strict and they want it to have a customer specification as well. Okay, but your upper limit and lower limit must be uh, in between of the upper limit of the customer and lower limit of the customer specification. Okay, so this is the control chart. Control chart is actually saying, stating that whether your uh, project or your product uh, is in control. Okay, so if it's out of control, means the uh, one of one data one of the data is outside the boundaries. Okay, therefore you need you need to take a necessary measure to make sure that uh, the data is kept within the uh, limits. Okay, these are uh, samples of control chart. Okay, so these are the upper limit. These are the lower limit. As you can see, 
one, uh, two of these data is beyond the upper limit. Okay, so there is something wrong. So if there is something wrong, then you need to know why. Why makes this uh, uh, the defect is uh, over the control limit? Okay, and this is also shows about the control chart. Okay. Mm, okay. Now the third one is histogram. Histogram, everyone knows about histogram. It's a very uh, simple but us um, useful. Uh, it's a visual. Useful visual uh, data representation. Yeah, so um, it actually uh, explains on the frequency. How often does your um, defect occurs? Right. So it demonstrates the numbers of defect by source or by component. For example, uh, today the defect is four four numbers. Uh, maybe uh, yesterday your the the defect is two numbers and so on and so forth. Yeah, so you know the frequency and you can take action uh, uh, according to this analysis or data. And then the fourth one is scatter diagram. Scatter diagram, as you can see, that uh, your data are scattered. Yeah, scattered. So if uh, uh, it actually tells you the correlation between two variables, right? So scatter plot can show the relationship between two parameters. And for example, if you want to understand the relationship between project team and working late hours, so you can see what are the uh, real correlation. Yeah. So if your data is in this manner, therefore it is a strong correlation. But if this is scattered all over the place, uh, or, or maybe um, not too, uh, not too near to each other, is a moderate correlation. But if your data is all over the place, so there is no correlation, right? No correlation means that there is no correlation between project team and working late hours. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that is the scatter plot. Okay, scatter diagram. Okay, these are the scatter diagram. Uh, that uh, another scatter diagram that I want to show you that can show the plan performance. For example, these are the plan performance versus the actual performance. So you can see what is the relationship, whether your actual performance is better or according to the plan's performance. Okay, so it actually tells you the relationship. Okay, and then uh, meetings. Uh, meetings is approved change request review and also retrospective of lesson learned. You also can conduct a meeting with your project team to uh, review of anything that has been changed uh, that you want to implement in the co quality control process. Yeah. And maybe uh, you want to conduct a meeting and uh, discuss on the successful uh, in elements in a project, how you can improve, and what are the uh, uh, what can be incorporated in the ongoing or future project, and what to add in the organization process asset. Okay, so that's other tools. Uh, that is usually used or typically used in quality control. Now the output of quality control. So once you have analyzed, you have the data, and now these are the output. Output means the quality control measurement. What are the quality control activities that you have conducted and then verified deliverables. So this is how you want to accept uh, your product. Okay, and according to the specification that you have uh, identified earlier, yeah, and you have already analyzed and you have found out that your deliverables can be accept, accepted. Works performance information, if there is any uh, rejection on the material or rework required recommendation for corrective action, so you need to put this in the work performance information 
And again, the change request, if there is any changes occur during the control, quality control process, you need to uh, review and disposition it in the throughout uh, in the in the project management uh, process yeah project management plan updates and if there is any changes you also need to update uh, other departments as well not just quality management not just quality department but other departments yeah uh, because that will affect other departments as well Project document update, so uh, issue log, lesson learn, register, risk register, test and evaluation document. So these are the documents that you need to update, yeah? uh, not just the management plan, but also in all uh, project documents, yeah? you need to update. Okay, so that's are the output of quality control. So you have input, what you need. Uh, in dealing with quality control process and then you have the tools and techniques to use during the quality control process and you have the output yeah output to maksudnya you have the final uh, documents that you need to uh, keep or use in the future project okay okay so that's all for uh, today's class, which is con project control.